Welcome to another video with Mr. Long and in this video we're looking at how we can test your code with a technique called trace tables. Trace tables is a way that you can keep track of each variable in your code so that you can try and predict step by step what those variables are going to do. It is used by programmers to try and identify potential problems and to see exactly where the code is going wrong or what it is doing. So we're going to do two examples, one where we show you how to set it up and then another example where we do a grade 11 example. Tracing the values in a a nested loop with arrays. So let's try to do these examples. So trace tables can be done on paper or you can do them in a spreadsheet because spreadsheets have nice table layouts already. So what I tend to do whenever I do a trace table is I like to keep track of the line that we're going to be at so we can identify which line we are using and then I write in each column I want to record the values for a particular variable. So we can see there's an R total variable so I'll call this R total and we're going to have a K variable so we'll put the K and that seems to be the only variables that I've got. Then I'm going to put a true slash false option. What that's for is for whenever we have an if statement or a conditional loop, we can identify when that conditional loop is true or false. Like for example, there we're going to determine if that statement is true or false. And then whenever we display stuff, I'm just going to put output as another option. So whenever we display stuff, like in this mem display lines of add, indicate what is being displayed. So that's what I'll put as my heading. So that's what I do first. And then before I actually go through the code, is I also look at the begins and ends and make sure that we identify what code is grouped together. So over here, you can see there's a begin and there's an end so all of that code is grouped inside of that while loop so just remember that that's the only little tricky bit here that seems quite simple and easy to follow so let's start off with line one so we're going to type in we're going to start with line one and our first line of code says that our total is a zero so we put a zero under the our total variable now whenever we are referring to variables we refer to the last value that that variable has in it so we don't refer to it's the zero if it's changed later on we refer to whatever the last value is so then we're going to go to line two and in line two k is equal to zero so over here we can put k is equal to zero so we're basically initializing our variables now we get to the while loop so we're going to put three there and the while loop says while our total is less than 10 so let's look at our total is that zero less than 10 yes that is true so i'll put a t there for true or you could type the whole word true so if it's true that means we must do the loop so we're going to go to line four and line four says we must increase k so k was a zero so now it's going to become a one and then we're going to go to five our total is equal to whatever's in our so we take that zero we take that one we add those two values together so we get a one and we put that value back into our total so our total is going to become a one and then we're going to go to line six and line six says we must display our total our total at the moment is one that's the last value of our total so we'll make it a one so there we go we've done the loop but we need to now go back to the top to line three because we need to check this value again so let's ask the question is our total which is one is our total less than 10 yes that is true which means we must do the loop again so we're going to go to line four which says increase rk which means rk now becomes a two then we're going to go to line five which says our total plus k so that's two from k plus the total our total that's two plus one that is three that becomes the new our total value so we're going to put a three there in our total then we go to line six and line six says display our total our total at the moment is three so we'll put three over there and now we go back up to our while loop so let's look our total is a three is it less than 10 yes that is true so we'll put a t there for true and we do the loop again so go to four and four is increase k that becomes a three line five take the three of k take the three of our total add them together we get a six put that back into our total so our total becomes a six and then line six says we must display our total which is at the moment a six so we'll do that and then we go back up to the loop to line three and now we're going to go okay so six is that less than ten yes that is true so we'll put a t there go to line four increase k which now becomes a four now we go to line five now that four of k plus the six of our total that equals to 10 we put that 10 into our total so our total now becomes a 10. now i know our loop is saying well our total is less than 10 but we haven't gotten to that line yet we need to carry on going and and only check our total when we get there so don't stop the loop we're going to continue the full loop we're not at line three yet so we go to line six which says we must display our total which is display the value of 10 because our total is a 10 and then we're going to go to line three and line three says is our total less than 10? 10 is not less than 10. It's equal to 10, but it's not less than. So now it is false. So now that it is false, it doesn't do any of the loop, but it does continue after the loop. And the line after the loop is loop is line seven. So if I come here to line seven, 
we need to do that line now which is display the value of k and if we look at the top here k's value is there that is the 4 so we can now output the value 4 so we are expecting the memo display to have a 1 3 6 10 and 4 in it so i've put the code in a program already so let's test it to see if we get the same results so we're going to click on example 1 1 3 6 10 4 one, three, six, ten, four. That's exactly what we wanted. So we know that our code is working. Fantastic. So we're now going to do another example for grade 11 and we're dealing with a nested loop and we are dealing with array. So at the moment I've got the values in my array and I've got an R size variable which is of four. So those are values that aren't or that value is not going to change but these might change. That's why they're in the table. Now before I even start I need to see here that there's begins and ends and there's for loops and if statements and we need to identify what is grouped with what. So first of all, this begin end, that all of the code between that begin and end is attached to that for loop. So what I've done is I've actually got a little marker here, which I'm going to change the color to. Let's make it a nice little blue. So you can see all of that code is for that for loop. So when k equals to 1, we must go through all of that code. And then we've got another for loop here, and I've made a little marker there. Let's change its color to a different color. Let's make that maybe a green color. So we can see there that for loop is just up until there. There's no begin end. It only does one statement. So that for loop will just repeat that particular statement for that for loop and then there's an if statement over here which I'm going to change to another color as well so there we go so there we can see the if statement that part is attached to the if statement and not this part based on the indentation and also based on the fact that the if statement and a for loop only do one statement unless there are begins and ends so it's always good to mark off what is attached to what just so that we know when to stop and then we come over here and we see that the, the labels have been done for us and another little trick whenever I'm doing a for loop we're going to start the value but we need to take note of when we must end and we won't do that on our trace table but on the side somewhere I'll take a note of when we need that loop to go until okay so let's get started straight away let's start with line one okay so line one is a for loop and the for loop goes from one so k is going to start off being a one but because it's a for loop it's going to go until size minus one now size is a four so I'm just going to make a little note here that it must go until four minus one three so just take note when this k gets to three that's the last time we do the loop and then we stop so just remember that we're then going to do line two so for the for loop we need to do all of these lines for that full k is equals to a one so we start off with our num being a zero so we do that and then i'm going to do line three now line three is another for loop and that is j is equal to k which is a one but it's going to go until k plus one which is one plus one which is two so that's going to do it basically twice so when j becomes a two we will do that statement one more time so let's go line four and we're going to say our num which at the moment is a zero plus the value in the temp array at position j what is j j is a one so array temp one it has a one at it so this is the index this is position one two three and four this is the value at position one the value of position two the value so the, the value of position one because j is a one array temp one that's a one that's that's that one and we're going to add it to our num which our num is a zero so that plus that is going to equal to a zero plus one which is a one and that one is going to go into num so num is now going to become a one and we are not at the end of that for loop because remember k goes from k from one until two we're in that loop at the moment we don't move there until we finish this loop so now we finish that loop for the j equals to one so now we're going to go back to line three j now becomes a two which means that's the last time that that indicates i'll make that away so now we go do line four one more time and we say our num at the moment is a one we take array temp j j is now a two so that's the three value so we take that three plus our num value so three plus one is four and that value goes into our num so our num now becomes a four so there we go so that's the end of that green loop now we go to line five line five says asks a question if our num which is four mod two equals one basically is our num an odd number is four an odd number if we divide by two is there a remainder of one no that is false so we're going to say false so because it's false we do not do line six we only do line six if that if statement is true so we jump straight away to line seven and line seven yes yeah, tricky let's be careful here yeah? we're going to take that r num value which is four and we're going to put it into array temp k what is the value of k at the moment it's still a one so array temp k1 that value must change to whatever r num is so we're going to put a four there in the array so that one has now changed to a four. Is everyone happy with that first iteration of the K4 for loop? 
Now we're going to go back up because we are not at our k value is not at three. We're now going to go to the next value after one, which is a one. And we're going to do it all again. So go to line two. We're going to set our num to a zero. We're going to go to line three, which says that for j must equal to k. k at the moment is two. And it goes up until k plus one. It goes up until two plus one, which is a three. So this is going to go two until three. So I've just taken a marker there to note that, that when we do when that becomes a three, we do the for loop one more time. Let's go to line four. Now we've got to really be very careful with where we're referring to what. So array temp j. J is a two. So the value at position two is a three. And we're going to take that three and add it onto our num, which at the moment is zero. So naught plus three is three. So our num now becomes a three. Now we're going to go to line three again because we've not finished our loop. And now two plus one becomes a three. So now we can see that we are doing this for one last time because we said we go from two until three. So we do line four one more time and we're going to say array J. So J is now a three. So that four value, we can take that four value and add it to our num, which is a three. So what's four plus three? That's a seven. And we put that seven into our num. So our num now becomes a seven. So now we are finished that loop because we went from two to three. Now we are finished line four. We can now move to line five and we can ask the question, is our num divided by two leave a remainder of one? Is it odd? Yes, it is. So this is a true statement. Now we must do line six. We didn't do it the previous time. Now we are going to do it. What are we going to do? We're going to take our num, which is seven, multiplied by two. So seven times two is 14 and put that back into our num. So our num now becomes 14. And now we go to line seven and line seven says array k. So let's look at the k value. That is the two. So that column there, we're looking at that value must equal to whatever's in our num and our num we change to a 14. So I'll put a 14 there and there we go. So that's great. Now let's carry on. We're going to go to line one because we are not at three at the moment. So we're going to actually make that a three. We are now at the last iteration of K. So let's go to line two and line two says our num is a zero. So our num becomes a zero and we go to line three now. Now we're doing another loop where J is equal to the value of K. So we start off at three and we're going to go until K plus one. So three plus one is four so we're going to do this from three until four go to line four and we're going to say our num which is the moment is zero and we're going to add it to array j our j value is three so array j let's go to the top here that's a four you see that four so we're going to take that four and add it to two, zero and put that into num so we're going to make that a four and now we go back up to three because we want to continue this loop now we go from three until four and now that value four we now we at the last value of that so we can do this one more time we're going to do four one more time and we're going to say our num which at the moment is four and we're going to add to it the value in array position four which is a seven so we can take that seven plus a bar that four and that's going to become a 11 so that value goes into our num so take that four plus the seven and put it back into our num so now we are finished that loop so we're going to go to line five now our num we're going to ask is that number if we divide by two do we have one remainder yes we do it is an odd number so that is true so therefore we must do line six so line six says take that 11 times about two that's 22 and put it back into our num so we make it 22 and then we go to line seven seven says array k at the moment k is a three change it to the 22 so the array three over here that's going to become 22 then we go technically technically with four loops it will go back up to the one and make it a four and realize that we are at the end of the loop but we didn't do the fathers but technically it does do that i don't think we need to stress too much about that but then let's do leave it at that so that's the end of my loop there's no lines off after that so you can see that the array the last value wasn't touched but the one now is a four the three is a 14 and the third value is a 22. So I've done and the code over here. I've given the original values and I've got the code over here. And what I did at the end, just so we can test it, is display the values in the array so we can see that we get the same values. So let's run it. So remember, we want the one to become a four, the two to become a 14 and the three to become a 22. But the four must remain a seven. 4, 14, 22, 7. There we go. So we've traced the code. So now we can see exactly how it worked, how it went through each value and changed what. So that is how you do trace tables. You basically take it step by step to see what each line is doing. So again, my tips, 
Make sure you've got the right headings. You give one for each and every variable. You have a true false. And if you display anything, not in this case, but our previous case, you have an output one. Then make sure that you mark off what is grouped with what, with begins and ends and with for loops and if statements. If there's no begins, make sure that you know this is attached to which statement. So you know to repeat that for loop. You know that line is attached to the if statement only. You're not doing that line every single time. Make sure you mark it off and then you take it step by step going through each line using always the last value for that variable every single time. Don't just use the top one. Use the last value whenever you're doing a calculation. Okay, so now you know trace tables. Now go give it a go. For more videos on RT or programming on Delphi as well as computer literacy for CAT, make sure you click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, and check out our playlist to find videos that can help you. And follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.